Hi, and welcome to At Home Art Lessons with the Art Groupies. The Art Groupies help us develop great art habits. And we're going to be working with this new art groupie, and her name is Wanda. Wanda, she understands the art world, and she believes that there is more to art than just creating. Making connections with the art of other cultures to find personal meaning and inspiration is what Wanda is all about. We're going to take a field trip today with Wanda, and we're going to take it with this guy. He is an incredible American artist, and he grew up in the state of Montana. He was inspired by Jungle Book and his dad, who had the love of outdoors. His name is John Bonovich. John Bonovich does dramatic portrayals of wildlife, and he creates impressive details. And he does this by spending lots of time out in the wild with the animals. He loves to go and spend tons of time in Africa. And we're going to join John in Africa, and we're going to create a wildebeest. A wildebeest is a quite unique type of creature. He looks like he's a combination of three different types of animals. A horse. He has a tail like a horse. His back legs look like legs of an antelope, and his front legs kind of have the impression of an ox. Wildebeests migrate to Lake Victoria. They're very strong and they are super fast and they can run up to 50 miles an hour. So we're going to create our, wildebe our wildebeest with simple shapes. And the first shape that we're going to create it with, or should I say letter, is the letter J. We're going to start with the letter J and this is going to be our wildebeest head. We're then going to create his horns. Horn on one side and a horn on the other. We're going to connect the horns with a little unhappy face. We're then going to, from the horn all the way to the back, create a nice little wavy line, and this is for the back of the Wilter Beast. We're going to then come down and make a curve line, almost like the letter C, and then come down and go straight down. And this is the hind legs of the Wilder Beast. We're then going to start with the belly of the Wilder Beast. We're moving back towards that letter J, and now we're going to create the spindly legs of an ox. We we're then going to add another letter C for his jowl or cheekbone, I guess. And then we're going to add his beard and his back mane that goes all the way to his underbelly. Then his other leg and the front leg. So there's our wildebeest. We're then going to add his tail like a horse. He also has a mane that goes up top, kind of like a horse again. He has a big patch of black fur on the front of his face. Make a little smile. So there's my wildebeest. When you're happy with your wildebeest, you can then begin coloring him. I'm going to color my wildebeest with a brown crown. I'm going to use two different colors. I'm going to use a lighter brown, like a tan, and I'm going to just move my crown back and forth horizontally and color in my wildebeest. Now, wildebeest often hang out with zebras. They do this not because, you know, they want to be friends with them, but 
because they want to be protected. Yes, believe it or not, they hang out with zebras for protection. Not because the zebra is going to do the fighting for them in that kind of respect. That's not the type of protection I'm referring to. The protection that I'm referring to about a wildebeest and a, a zebra is that a wildebeest is quite capable of knowing and responding to other wild animals' alarm calls. So usually in a herd of animals, there's always one that always kind of keeps the eye out for danger. And when he or she senses danger, they put out a distress call or an alarm call. And the wildebeests pick up on that wilder that alarm call by the zebras and they take off and therefore are protected and not hurt by the animal that is aggressing towards them. So I'm, I'm trying to use two different colors here of brown to kind of show form and give my wildebeest instead of a flat appearance, but a more three-dimensional appearance that it looks like he's not flat like a piece of paper, that he is made of bones and muscle and skin. You don't want to color him in totally brown. So I want to have a little bit of what we call value in my wildebeest. Wildebeest also have hooves like a like a horse. So we'll color those in black along with his mane and his beard and his his undercarriage beard. So we can try to create a different type of texture or a different type of hair than the hair that's covering his body by using a more scribbly line and we can do that all under here and above here with a, a marker. I'm also going to go back in with it with a crown. So I want to use some different types of medium to get different types of texture. So I'm going to color in his hooves. and also his hair underneath and under his chin. His facial hair is black, which makes him very unique to other animals. And he also has this mane that grows all along his back. And then we have the hair just like a horse on his tail. You can add some lines and some colors on his horns to give them a three-dimensional feeling by adding some shadows, some other colors. So after I'm done that, now, voila, I'm going to give my wildebeest his landscape, where he lives. So I'm going to create that horizon line, which is the line that separates the ground from the sky. I'm going to give my wildebeest some hills in the background. Give my wildebeest maybe some rocks in the foreground. So to create a interesting piece, we need to add some details. And we do that by creating some landscape. And wildebeests live in an area that has some vegetation, some rocks. And we'll do that by adding all different kinds of 
lines and shapes to create that landscape for our animal, the habitat. What's awesome about um, John Bonovich is that all the money that he creates from his sale of his beautiful paintings, he uses that money to support conservation efforts that promote habitat protection for animals of Africa and animals around the world. I think he has different um, collaborations with about seven different countries. So just like our new art groupie, it's more than just art. He's using his art to save animals and to save their habitat. And that is just absolutely inspiring. His paintings are gorgeous. They look like they're actual photographs. I'm blown away by the, the detail. I honestly thought they were photographs and I thought he was a photographer. And then the more I researched him, I was just blown away. So I'm going to use lots of different colors in my background, not just some blues, but I'm going to add some purples. I'm going to take things that I've learned from other artists and have them inspire my artwork and create beautiful landscapes for my, my wildebeest. Again, a very strange but very fast animal. And I guess since it kind of looks like a horse, it makes me question, okay, well, if I guess he looks like a horse, maybe he is part horse. That's why the zebras and the wildebeests get along so well. So I'm going to blend some more colors in my background to create a beautiful sky. I'm also going to blend and put colors in my foreground, in my rocks, in my grass, just to create a beautiful landscape for my wildebeest. So here's what the finished product turned out like. Again, art is more than just creating. Being inspired by someone to be more than just art is incredible. And using his money that he gets from his paintings to help animals and to create a channel for money to support habitat protection is just incredible. So Again, Wanda is an inspiration to think that there's more than just creating. You can do good things with art. You can make connections with people and you can inspire people and you can explore ideas. So I hope you have fun learning about my new artist and with my new groupie. Have fun.